Hey there. Good evening. We are here today, Ruben. Well, first off, Ruben, welcome. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Excellent. Today we're going to look at how to teach fiction, you know, specifically horror. Ruben, can you uh, elaborate? I mean, you teach English. How do you teach it? How do you teach horror? Well, horror fiction is only taught. Um, the only reason I teach it is because it seems to grab students. They they get kind of excited about the idea of scaring each other. So it's one thing to say, "Hey, let's let me teach you how to write a short story," or "Let me teach you how to write fiction," and or I could say, "Hey, let's have a scary story contest." Excellent. Which is what I say. And I wait till Halloween. We turn it into a contest. Students have some buy-in. And um, but how do you get them to like start perfect. to write it, though? I mean, what's the what are the steps to get them to start going? Back? Well, um, can you bring up the objectives? Um, sure. I sent you the objectives, the stat, state standard, and the objectives, and we'll at least get some background as to what the uh, what the end goal is okay. and um, I will say while you're bringing it up one of them is going to be revising so you see this um, this first um, this thing right here it says develop and strengthen writing and revising is a, a big part of it editing rewriting so they cannot get an A unless they give me two drafts now this is important yeah. because a lot of students um, don't understand this concept of revising. Um, this is right on, off the state standard, as you can see. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's very important. Some of the objectives here, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover a couple of them here. Sure. Uh, suspense is something that I um, define for them, and it, it covers the idea of, and I ask them, do you ever see something at the movies mm. Or on Netflix or read something that makes you want to keep reading or make you want to keep watching that is suspense okay. so that's part of it the other thing we cover is foreshadowing so um, foreshadowing and conflict why do I do that it's because why do we cover that it's because mm -hmm. I noticed that with students they have random events especially at the end they'll tack on a random event at the end and they end it okay. uh, some random character comes out of the out of the bushes and <laughs> um, and kills somebody right. okay um, and by the way let me just cover horror a little bit it's not that I love horror in fact I don't I do not love modern horror mm. I like old I like certain horror and we'll look at a couple of stories but um, uh, and in terms, in terms of movies Movies, I like Jaws, The Exorcist, because they're well done, but modern stuff doesn't seem to be very, it's just like slasher, and some of the Saw movies are okay, I guess, but um, back to the idea of random events at the end, I tell them this, if I see something tacked on at the end, which is very common, because they want to finish, they want to hit the word count, which is, I give them two and a half pages minimum, you cannot cover setting conflict resolution in less than two and a half pages, it's impossible. Uh, oh. Double space, come on, you can't do it. And so I talked to them about foreshadowing. Did you foreshadow this event at the end? Yeah. And it forces them to have to go back and build a better story. Right. The other thing I, I do good. is, yeah, uh, they have to, number four, what is conflict and dialogue? So I noticed that students will write something uh, very quickly. Uh, a, a boy was passing the, the scary looking house on the way home from school. He, a, a, an old lady comes out, attacks him, or hmm. tells, not, not even attacks, but tells him to, to never come back here again or pass her house again. And then he runs away. And I say, wait a minute, why don't you show us this? Don't tell us this, show it to us in a dialogue. So they learn early on to create dialogue, the importance of it. They understand yeah. action as opposed to telling us. It, it's a pretty good standard to really bring their storytelling abilities out. 
by the way, later on, when we just go back to analysis of stories and they're not asked to write mm-hmm. one, they can pick things off much quicker. They know what foreshadowing is now because they had to write it. They know what resol- a, a, a satis- see it, number five, yeah. a satisfying ending isn't random. Right. We saw it early on. It was just a hint. No. A hint you, early on. It's a more effective ending. Do you ever have them like uh, share each other's stories so that they could s- catch those? Maybe they, maybe instead of you telling them, hey, you, you know, there's no foreshadowing here. Do they ever work in groups or, or pairs and they see that and they yes. say, hey, you're, you're missing this piece? Yes. So I break them up into groups yeah. where they um, – this it depends on the, the level – and skill of your of your writers, I suppose, but mm. sometimes it's important to just pick off the bad punctuation, mm. the bad format. Um, we'll we'll cover format right now, and then that kind of level that that makes it a, a little improvements go a long way. Um, but sh- but absolutely, that's important Good. that they get in groups and they and they and to answer your question specifically, yes, also for story purposes okay cool um now you're talking about now revision now this is the last piece now now you hadn't really spoken to that you you, um you mentioned well revising is just this let me just say this you want to receive a document and comment on every document even if you don't comment on the second draft because it's a lot of it's yeah. a lot of work, as you know, to look at every piece. Um, but the second draft, they're going to get a decent grade because let's say you have a student with low skills. They improve their draft. That is a good grade, no matter what. This is a, If you're going by this standard, this is a revision standard. Right. They revise their work. As long as they met the basics, these objectives, they gave me a setting – some students, not many, they don't have setting. They don't, I don't know where they're at. What is this? Where are we talking? These two characters are just randomly talking. What is it? They have that. They have setting, foreshadowing, dialogue, and an ending. Resolution, second draft. That's going to be a B minimum. So um, you asked earlier, how do they become – how do I get them to write? Yeah. One way is we look at other stories. So okay. – um, Bring up the monkey's paw. I think I sent you um, the monkey's paw. Um, this is a pretty decent story. It's and I talked to them about how fiction, horror fiction, is sometimes it falls under the realm of spooky and not <gasps> terrifying. I wouldn't say this is terrifying, but if you could scroll down a little bit, I like how they they give us dialogue right here, right here. Stop. Stop. Uh, see the dialogue. Mm-hmm. I talk about double space and let us see the each character has its own paragraph when they're talking. So it's a really good um, example of dialogue, how it's broken up. This goes a long way because when you, there's nothing more soul crushing than to see a badly formatted short story. It's it's impossible to read. You don't know who's talking. This is a good start. Um, the, the other one I sent you is um, so that's that's third person. Um, good story too. That's one, a scary story. But go ahead. Three, skele- <laughs> three skeleton key. Can you hit that one? Yeah. Um, that one is first person. Let's scroll down because this is this is uh, from a, a a text. Yeah, there you go. Click on that. Um, this is first person, and it's about um, rats taking over an island in which this guy is a is a lighthouse to total suspense and you could see the buildup. You could see the foreshadowing. This is great for foreshadowing um, because look at the first line. And then there's another one where if you scroll down a little bit, um, he talks about how uh, there's a, there's an old legend. It's called three skeleton where there were three dancing skeletons on the so it gives you of an ample picture of a foreshadowing it reminds students the last so this gets student now i'm not saying to, to read all three you just have to pick 
what would be best for students. Maybe you pick two out of, there's a third one I have here um, by Stephen King, um, Strawberry Spring. Um, this, a lot of these, uh, this is a good start. Mm. You know, when you read a, a story with the students, yeah. it gets them into this mood of writing a scary story. You might want to think twice about showing this one because it's really <laughs> It's about a serial killer that's, that's yes. going on in um, a Northeast college, like a New England college. And it's, it's really spooky. It's, it's horror. I mean, it's Stephen King. Right. But if a student, you know, if you feel like students are a little bit older and they want something a little bit more terrifying. And some of these kids uh, have already read him. So they're, they're reading yeah, what they're getting themselves. They're fans. Some of them are fans. Um, and um, it has, a, it kind of, you see how it says Spring Hill Jack. It kind of has a nod to Jack the Ripper. So, uh, mm. so reading them stories is a way to get them started. Um, another thing um, I, I like to do is I like to assign, I like to do the assignments that I assign. So uh, I sent you a link to my scary story, the white car killer. And um, it's fun because I read them the whole thing and they, I add humor to my stories. So it's scary, but it's funny. At least I think so. They laugh. And uh, so that's a way to do it too. Um, and so I do want to say this uh, because I understand when um, you have a, a student who doesn't want to do this, right. who looks at fiction as something that is foreign to them. Um, and you can go back to the objectives if you want. But, sure. um, and that is, if you have a student who has nothing to, um, to offer or to do mm -hmm. it, or, or doesn't know how to start, tell them, hey, you know what? What about just writing a powerful memory? Start mm. with the words, I remember. I remember. That's and good. then they can't say they have no memory. They can try to say that to you. They can say, I don't have any memories. Yes, you do. Because the thing is, is that almost every story is based on a true story. Sure. Any fiction you read, and I, and I cover this with them, any fiction you read is based on something real. Um, the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe is not about a bird. It's about a girl. And <laughs> I joke with them. It's always about a girl. It is. It is. Um, it's always about a woman. And so that's what it's based on, a true story. So <laughs> um, awesome. the last thing I want to, to show you is uh, – any questions so far? I mean, does that make sense? No, it does. I mean, I was thinking about the, the – I, I think it's great that you model it, Ruben, uh, because sometimes they just want to see it, right? And then you're showing – and yours happened before pages, but I think they would say, well, teacher went a little further than – you know, maybe we have to we'll do two and a half pages minimum, two and a half to four pages. But I like, again, to model. I think we need to do that with our students as a model. And even when you make mistakes. So I'm really cool when I make a mistake and they say, hey, mister, you forgot that period or whatever. And I go, oh, that's great. Thanks, guys. Uh, I, I make mistakes. I'm glad you guys are, are catching up to me. So I'll, I'll, I, do, I, you know. I do want to point out that um, my, my story is titled The White Car Killer. And the reason why... Right. Um, I did this, I explained this to the students, is that when I was a kid, so uh -oh. there's, a, there's a scene in this story where, uh, well, there's a white car, there's a killer driving a white car in the city, and he's abducting boys. And um, there's a scene where a boy is riding a bicycle, and he, and then you, you could go to, go to the standards if you don't mind. Sure, sure. A, a kid is riding a bicycle, and um, he, he, he sees a white car behind him and he, he looks and he sees this white car slowly riding behind him and it's, he's thinking it's the white car killer and he slams into a car, a parked car, and he falls to the ground. And then the, the killer, it's the white car killer. So I tell my students this. I say, when I was a kid – in Covina, there was a really a man driving around in a white car abducting kids. That really happened. That really happened. And so I based my story on that. Mm. And this happened. 
I was riding a bike and I saw a white car behind me and I kept looking and I wasn't watching where I was going and I slammed into a parked car. Now, there wasn't anybody that abducted me. There wasn't any killer. It wasn't the killer. He kept driving. And I, I point that out because I tell them I used that experience in fifth grade to write mm -hmm. my story today. Yeah. So this is what writers do. This is the business of writing. They take real life events and they they exaggerate they embellish i teach them the word embellish perfect they have fun with it and they build at it by I'm the just, way mm. oh go on no I'm, saying, I'm just glad you didn't use any stories of me ter terrorizing you but go ahead yeah that was really funny um <laughs> so thanks for you interrupting me for that <laughs> um so the the other thing is is that oh man was oh so the story that the the student story that we're going to look at right now Yes. Um, this, a piece of something true happened to this kid. And the first draft, it was just Ouija board stuff. And these kids got together in a house playing a Ouija board. But I saw the potential. It couldn't have been realized in that, for, in, a, in one draft. Maybe not even a second. I might have, this might have been his third draft. Hmm. And he won best story. He won the contest. He was... You know, he got a he got a, a gift card for me and a, and a book. I got him a different season, Stephen King. But if you can get to that story right now, sure. Uh, I don't know if it's there. Yeah. No, everybody knows your email address. Did you want that? That's so this story, um, he developed it, and I liked. If you scroll down, I liked that he worked on dialogue. It's not perfect, but it's broken up. This dialogue mm -hmm. is broken up. It's a great improvement. And the story absolutely delighted the other students. <laughs> um, it delighted my TA. Um, a lot of dialogue. To, 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 for the student to hear that from other students, from their peers, and, and there was a second place. I, I, the other student who got second place received a reward too, uh, an award because he was um, – this was so good. But I just wanted to say, though, that it's just a very pleasing thing for a student to hear that kind of peer feedback. You don't want to make them dizzy, so you go back to the, the, the oh, standards. Okay. But, um, but that, was, um, that was a real kick to see. So him. he really got into it, too, because that story is quite long. I mean, the dialogue. Obviously, he got into it. He got into it, he, yeah. He, cool. he really did. Um, I told him, I, I, hey, I'm gonna, his name is Abraham. I told him, hey, you know, um, I'm going to share your story on the podcast. He was, he liked that. And so, uh, well, that's the scary story. Thank assignment. you, Ruben. Thank you for sharing that. And um, thank you for all being with us this evening as Ruben shared. This. And this is what we want to do. We want to be able to share our best practices, right? And uh, thanks, Ruben. Appreciate that. Goodbye. You're welcome. Bye-bye.